then I get a call out of the blue from this director who actually saw me in a club and was like, I'm going to put you in my movie, I'm going to put you in my movie. I was like, yeah, whatever. And I got a call to be an extra in Boys in the Hood. It was John Singleton, okay. and he had just graduated from film school and was doing this movie. And a couple of years later, and went, I need you to choreograph this music video for me. And, you know, and he's talking about the music video, and it's going to be Egyptian theme and all this stuff about it. And I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, okay, great. That's great. Okay, who's the artist? And he says, Michael Jackson. And I was like, okay, perfect. <laughs> and then I hung up the phone like, ah! And I was 21 at the time. That kind of sealed the deal for me to actually take it serious and go, okay, this is what I want to do. And I walked into the room and I just, you know, this is what we're going to do. How are you feeling with this? Are you feeling with that? He felt the music. So he never wanted you to count the song. He wanted you to mimic the rhythm of the song. So he wanted you to go, mm, ah, mm, mm, ah, mm. So you would have to do the beat of the song. And he played his music super loud. And because for him, it was all about the emotion of the beat and the song. And that drove the dance. I would go to all these clubs um, that were 18 and over clubs. And I'd go to these clubs and I would dance, 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 dance. And people would see me dancing there and ask me to do music videos. And I was like, sure, whatever. And it was kind of the beginning of hip hop. And, you know, we were a bunch of kids who didn't quite know exactly where it was going. I was born in Little Rock, Arkansas, but I've lived in Los Angeles since I was five. I loved dancing, and I had two younger sisters, so I would always make up dance routines with my younger sisters when, whenever my mom had friends and guests over. And my mom worked all the time, so I was always taking care of them, so I had lots of responsibility at a young age, which I was cool with. I, I loved my sisters, and I loved taking them to their you know, gymnastics lessons and piano lessons and all that, but I never really got to do anything because I was always kind of the other parent. I love mixing everything, a mishmash. I'm kind of, you know, I am I love high end and I respect designers for their their craft and their art. And, um, and then I love going to a vintage shop and finding like the perfect $5 dress to wear to the perfect event. And I love bangles. Mm. And these bangles are from all over the place. I am a flea market junkie, so when whatever city I travel in, I go flea market shopping like crazy. I feel really comfortable with hats and gloves and headpieces, and I'm an accessories girl. If I don't have accessories on, I feel a little weird. So I'm really into lingerie right now. I'm wearing lingerie, um, really uh, like the lingerie from the 40s and stuff as dresses. I'm just, I love, love, love that. So this is my Burning Man stash. And I found this headpiece in a costume shop in Vegas the last time I was there. And I was randomly just, oh, let me go visit some vintage stores and see. And I was like, that, that piece way, you know, the one way up there, can I see that? And when I put it on, I was just like, oh my God, this is my, this, I think this is my finale at Burning Man. My headpiece is, um, a lot of people think it's part of my hair with the braids. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like it just comes, becomes one. And I had this backpack that was just kind of decoration in my house. But I passed it one day and I was like, oh mm -hmm. my God, that has to go to Burning Man. Can you yeah. imagine me on my bike with all wood and just like, whoosh, whoosh. She's an Ethiopian warrior. It was a piece of jewelry that a friend had and let me borrow and she wanted it back. I really liked her and so I had her tattooed on me. I met Tony Basil in a club and she gave me my first audition. And, she, and, and then I met Rosie Perez and Rosie Perez was like, you have to call yourself a choreographer and you have to start charging for your services. And I was like, really? I can charge for that. My training was really just the routines and things I would make up with my sisters and I would record music videos and watch those and learn all the dance steps in them. And so that was kind of my training. It was street dance and they looked at it like street dance. When you would go to places and someone would say, you know, what do you do for a living? I'd say, oh, I'm a choreographer. And they said, what kind of dance? And I'd say hip hop. They go, oh. It would, it would be great to have um, a man in my life that's permanent but I, I feel like I have that in my son. Because even when you're in, you know, there's the peaks and the valleys of life, and even when you're in those valleys, like, 
there's a certain level of happiness mm -hmm. in it. I think one of the things that women do when after having children is, you know, their expectations of what a mother is. And for me, I always felt like if I stopped doing what I love to do in life, then I would not be a good mother. In our travels, he, he that's kind of all he knows. He's had a passport since he was five months old. He gets to spend time with me and watch me create, and he's on sets and he's asking the directors questions. And he gives, he feeds me mm -hmm. that wonderful companionship that you get in a relationship. Unconditional. I've never kind of lived my life off of kind of the expectations uh, that, that society puts on me. You know, I did in the beginning, and I got married at a young age, and then I, it fell apart, and I was devastated, and I was just like, oh! Like my life had come to an end, and I made myself really sick, and I kind of made a pact with myself in the hospital and I said, um, no matter what you do in life, you have to be happy and you have to make sure your happiness is the most important thing. There was a period of my life that I was like on the train of like, I have to do more and I have to be, you know, more successful and I have to accomplish this and I have to accomplish that and I found that I was not, it wasn't good for my soul. My mom was a very religious person. And I never wanted to go to church with her and stuff because it was she was just she was into like hardcore evangelist and all that. And I always felt like clubs were my class with her. That's what I would say. This is where I feel the closest to God. Wow. It's so something about doing things in its proper time. It's like I mean, I can't even tell you. When you do it in its proper time, everything just comes to fruition.